Well, hey guys, it's May. That means it's Skin Cancer Awareness Month. In this video, we're gonna go over risk factors for skin cancer. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a board certified dermatologist. I post a lot of skincare content here on YouTube. If that is of interest to you, consider subscribing or follow me over on Instagram or TikTok. I post on those platforms a lot as well. There are many types of skin cancers. Melanoma, which is deadly, squamous cell carcinoma, and basal cell carcinoma. Anyone can develop a skin cancer. Even if you have a deep skin tone and you never burn, you can get a skin cancer. But in this video, we're going to talk about things that put you at increased risk for making skin cancers. Number one is indoor tanning. Going in a tanning booth or tanning bed increases your risk of developing skin cancer, including the deadly melanoma. If you go in a tanning bed before the age of 35, it can increase your risk for getting melanoma 75%. Going in the tanning bed just once can also increase your risk for basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. Tanning beds are so dangerous because they deliver a very high and strong dose of UVA rays. UVA rays are part of the radiation that comes from the sun, penetrates the skin really deeply, destroys collagen, suppresses the immune system. The tanning response is kind of like an ouch to that, and that is why your skin turns brown. Tanning beds put you at elevated risk for all sorts of skin cancer, as well as skin aging. So never, ever, ever get in a tanning bed. They are carcinogens, and anyone under the age of 18 should not be allowed access to a tanning bed. In fact, many states regulate this, and in some countries around the world, tanning beds are illegal. Number two is a sunburn. A sunburn is an inflammatory response to a lot of skin damage caused by ultraviolet radiation from the sun, and immediately, of course, is painful painful, but lurking underneath the skin is permanent skin damage that cannot be repaired or reversed. As part of that skin damage, you have changes in the DNA in your skin cells. Having just five sunburns in your lifetime doubles your risk of melanoma. Having one sunburn in early childhood that blisters doubles your risk of melanoma. The more times you get a sunburn, the greater your risk of skin cancer is because it is cumulative damage that cannot be repaired or reversed. So if you are a parent or caregiver of young children, do everything possible to protect them from getting a sunburn. It will pay off dividends in their older adulthood because they won't have that background of severe sun damage that elevates their risk of skin cancer. Not to mention it will minimize the burden of changes that lead to premature skin aging. Number three is having pale skin and light hair. Now, any skin tone can develop skin cancer, but if you have pale skin, as well as either blonde hair or especially red hair, that puts you at a, in a greater risk category. Because the pigment in your skin is such that it doesn't offer the same extent of protection, you are more vulnerable to sunburns. These skin types are more likely to burn when they don't protect their skin from the sun. Oftentimes these individuals have a lot of freckles, which themselves are not a risk for skin cancer, but they're kind of a clue like this is a person that is going to be more vulnerable to sun damage, the kind of sun damage that leads to skin cancers later on in life. Another group of people who have pale skin are people who have the condition albinism. This is a genetic disease where the uh, skin cells that make pigment don't make any pigment. And these individuals are at extreme risk for uh, skin cancers because they don't have that protective pigment at all. Number four is having a lot of common moles. Now common moles are very common, but having more than 50 does ever so slightly increase your risk of melanoma. They themselves rarely, rarely, rarely ever turn into a skin cancer, but people who have more than 50 of them it's again kind of another one of those clues that this is a skin type that is going to respond to sun damage in such a way that maybe they're going to be more likely to develop a skin cancer so that is another risk factor common moles are symmetric smooth brown they may be a little bit elevated and they tend to be uniform in appearance they're never any larger than like the head of an eraser, so they're quite small. Those are common moles, but then there are atypical moles, otherwise known as dysplastic nevi. These are much larger, and they themselves rarely turn into a skin cancer, although they can, but having a lot of these also puts you at increased risk for uh, melanoma. Having more than five atypical nevi is a risk factor for melanoma, and some people have a lot of atypical nevi. 
For those folks, it is recommended, especially if there's a family history of skin cancer, that they see a dermatologist for regular skin checks. People with 10 or more dysplastic nevi have 12 times the melanoma risk. Dysplastic nevi not only are larger in shape, they can have a few different colors. They're just kind of irregular in appearance. They're not as uniform as a typical mole. Number six is another type of mole. It's called a congenital nevus. Congenital meaning you are born with this type of mole. People who have congenital nevi can develop melanoma with in them and the risk is anywhere from zero to five percent depending on the size of the congenital nevus again these are present at birth now if you have a congenital nevus that is the size of the palm of your hand or smaller very 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 low risk however there are some types of congenital nevi that are large enough to cover big portions of your back and the buttocks. Those are called bathing, bathing trunk nevi. Those carry a much greater risk of developing melanoma. Those individuals have to undergo more frequent skin checks. Number seven is being older. It's a fact, the longer you are on this planet, the greater your risk of skin cancer developing. The reason for that is skin cancer likely represents cumulative burden of sun damage. So the longer you've been on the planet, the more ultraviolet radiation that your body has seen, more likely skin cancer is going to appear. And as we get older, our immune system is not as robust and the immune system is really important for removing damaged skin cells. Therefore, your risk goes up. You know, as a side note, a lot of people like to interject their personal arguments whenever I caution about getting too much sun exposure and I advocate for protecting your skin from the damaging effects of sun, along with the recommendations of the American Board of Dermatology, the American Cancer Society, and pretty much any medical body out there, people will always say, well, our ancestors, they didn't get these skin cancers. They did get these skin cancers, but you have to remember our ancestors did not live long enough to really get as many skin cancers. The life expectancy has gone up tremendously, and with that comes more skin cancers, more time for UV damage to accumulate to lead to cancer. Number eight is being male. Men have a much greater risk of basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. We don't know entirely why this is. Some speculate it may be due to more sun exposure throughout one's lifetime, perhaps occupationally. I also think that women are more inclined, at least historically, to wear either sunscreen and or makeup. And some makeup offers low amounts of sunscreen, so that might actually you know, help explain some of the discrepancy. Number nine is having a history of skin cancer. Once you make one skin cancer, you're likely gonna make more of them. It's just a fact. Because your skin has seen a lot of sun, experienced a lot of sun damage, or there are factors in your background, medical history, your immune system, for example, that put you at risk. And once you make one, we know you're gonna make more. And so once you make a skin cancer and you have it treated, well, then you're likely gonna be paying more visits to the dermatologist for skin checks to survey for when that next one is gonna appear. Having one basal cell carcinoma means you are very likely to make another basal cell carcinoma. Having a basal cell carcinoma also makes it more likely that you go on to make a melanoma. Number 10 is your family history. If you have a family history of melanoma, it can increase your risk of developing a melanoma, specifically if a first degree relative has a history of melanoma. By first degree relatives, we're talking about people who are related to you by blood, who are either your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, or your children. 10% of people with melanoma have a family history of melanoma. And it may be due to shared lifestyle factors, shared exposures, or it may have to do with genetics. Number 11 is a weak immune system. Uh, having an impaired immune system means that your body can't quite clear out those sun damaged skin cells and repair damage to the DNA in your skin cells and you're more likely to form skin cancers. People who have an impaired immune system due to underlying medical conditions or medications that they take may put them at greater risk for skin cancers. People who have organ transplants, they have to go on medications that's, that lower their immune system so as to not reject the transplanted organ. They are at much greater risk for skin cancers. 
Some people with HIV, which can go on to lead to immunosuppression, they also may be at increased risk for certain types of skin cancer. Number 12 is a long-term or severe skin injury, like a scar from a thermal burn, or in some cases you can have a chronic bone infection that makes its way to the overlying skin. Both of those chronic injuries can put you at slightly increased risk for certain types of skin cancer. It's a small increase, but for those people, it is worthwhile surveying at least the affected area, whether it be the scar or the area the bone infection is, to make sure that they're not developing skin cancer. Number 13 is if you have ever had something called PUVA. PUVA stands for Sorlin and UVA. It is a type of treatment that we use in dermatology for a variety of skin conditions, most commonly psoriasis, as well as vitiligo. It's not used as commonly anymore, but it does carry a slightly increased risk of skin cancer because it uses a very controlled dose of UVA rays that, again, damage your skin, put you at risk. But like I said, that type of treatment, it's less commonly used these days. We have better forms of phototherapy and then we have better medications for treating those diseases. Number 14 are certain rare genetic conditions. One is called xeroderma pigmentosa and it is a condition in which your body does not heal DNA damage and therefore you make skin cancers very young, like in childhood and as, as an adolescent, so very young. The other one that comes to mind is something called basal cell nevus syndrome, otherwise known as Gorlin syndrome. This is a genetic condition in which you make a ton of basal cell skin cancers. Number 15 is infection with certain types of HPV, human papillomavirus. Human papillomavirus is a family of viruses and HPV viruses can cause common warts that happen like on your hands and your feet that are not associated with skin cancer or any type of cancer. So if you have a wart on your hands and feet, yes, that's due to an HPV virus, but no, it's not gonna put you at risk for skin cancer. But some types of HPV do increase your risk for skin cancer, namely those that uh, infect around the nails and those that infect the skin around the genitalia and around the anus can put you at risk for squamous cell carcinoma in those areas. Smoking, if you smoke cigarettes at least, that will increase your risk of squamous cell carcinoma of the lips. Now you may be wondering what about other things that are smoked. I can only tell you that we've got data in terms of the risk with tobacco smoke. It's very hard to tease out risks with these other things that people smoke. Uh, but you might postulate that the risk is there as well because you are exposing the skin to heat and potentially noxious chemicals, compounds that condense on the skin and lead to skin damage. And then finally, exposure to certain toxic chemicals. People who are exposed to arsenic do have a increased risk of skin cancer. Arsenic, it may be a contaminant in well water. So for those of you out there, if you've got some of these risk factors, it's a good idea to examine your skin and do skin checks. I'm going to be doing a video, if it's not up already, on how to check your skin for potentially skin cancer and uh, you know what things to look out for. So stay tuned for that video if it's not up already. But uh, yeah, I wanna also emphasize to you guys that just because you don't have any of these risk factors, it doesn't mean that you will not make a skin cancer. They're pretty common, and the longer you are around on this planet, the more likely it is that you will develop one. So knowing your risk factors definitely helps in you know paying careful attention early on, but anyone can develop one, so don't think you are out of the woods. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, I hope this video was informative. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.